Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Quickly review, inshallah, the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah that we covered last week. So here we're talking about the change of the Qibla and how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how the Qibla changed and why, what caused it to change, right? So one of the reasons that Allah SWT changed the Qibla was because of the love of Rasulullah for the Qibla itself, for the place that the Qibla was in, which is Makkah. Makkah. So uh, Prophet Allah SWT said that قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ That we would certainly see that your face would keep turning towards the sky. So meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in weight of something. You know, so as human, as a general human behavior, that when you're waiting for something, you keep looking in that direction, right? A very small example also <clears throat> shared uh, last time as well is, uh, when you're waiting for someone to come, so you keep looking outside the window, you're waiting for the bus to arrive, you keep looking towards the direction of from where the bus is supposed to come. So in that in that way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this shows also, so multiple things can be seen from here. But one thing that we can see is the love of Allah for his Rasul. So when uh even human beings when you when people love each other right just to give an example to relate what do we do we keep we notice even the smallest gestures of that person and you know just normal uh people that you just meet day to day you we barely notice much many things about them right but the people who are very dear like a mother a mother can look at a child's face and know what's 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 wrong right so small changes in or like a child can look at a parent's face and see there's like you know they're worried about something or something is up even if no one is saying so here Allah Pantala is describing the gestures of Rasulullah that you know this he could not have mentioned this right but here he's saying that he kept he notices that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he kept looking towards the sky and soon we shall turn you towards the Qibla. Qibla that you wish you are pleased with. The Qibla that you're pleased with. And Rasulullah SAW, he was he wanted the Qibla to be uh to be Makkah because that was his birth city. So turn your face. So this is a command for us. Uh, for for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and from him for us uh, and through him for us that wherever you are turn your face towards Masjid al Haram. This is referring to salah. So again, a prerequisite of salah is to is the qibla that we have to turn towards the qibla to pray. And wherever you are. You have to turn your face towards the prayer. Why is this mentioned again? It feels it somewhat feels like repetitive, right? Turn your face. So here it's me, it means first is turn your face towards the qibla. Then Allah is saying wherever you are, meaning a place that you live at, you know where the qibla is. But when you leave the house, you are in a different place. But wherever you go, your main basically this boils down, this comes down to the fact that. The main thing for a person, their day revolves around salah. Because even when you leave your house, it's not like you just leave everything. And you're just, you have no idea what time the salah is, where you have to, what direction it is. Or you're, you're not bothered or you don't have the dev uh, any devices, any way to find out. So meaning that wherever you are, when you leave your house, or sometimes you plan your day in such a way that you leave, you leave at a time where either you have performed your salah at home and then you're going and then you come back, it's time for the end. But a lot of the time it happens that when you're outside, it's time for salah. So as now we have no excuse because we have all the technology to find in which way is the Qibla. So wherever you are, know your Qibla. Now this has another meaning and it's very important. This is not just physical meaning of the Qibla for Salah. Here, the Qibla also means your direction in life. What is your direction in life? What is your, which way do you turn to? What's your focus in life? So here Allah is saying, wherever you are, whatever is happening in your life, whatever stage you're at, you're a teenager, you're an adult, someone got married, you know, some, someone had a child, you know, or someone is like really young or really old, or someone had a sickness, wherever you are, 
know your Qibla, meaning know your direction. Things happen in life, things change in life, different things happen, uh, 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 different, you know, people get occupied, new work, new job, new, new courses, new school. So whatever is happening in your life, you should know your direction, meaning your life should not take you and you, you should not get so involved in it that you are just away from the book of Allah and you have no direction in your life. OK, so uh, this so this is very important. Um, so وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطَرَ So wherever you are, turn your faces towards your shatara, shatara basically your direction. وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ لَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ, من ربهم And who, indeed those who were given this book, meaning the Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, they knew this is the truth from their Rabb. Okay, this is already mentioned. So what was mentioned for them is that a sign of a last prophet would be that his qibla would be Mecca. They already knew this. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And again, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? So every time we come across an ayah, we should think why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this is because that sometimes when you do something, people create doubts. So a change in qibla was a big event in in the in Medina in in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, if in the life of the Sahabas and the people the Munafikun the the hypocrites the the people around they were creating a lot of chaos what the Qibla changed oh my God now you're praying in this direction you're praying in opposite complete direction so you know people around when you're trying to do the right thing when you're trying to follow the command of Allah people create a lot of buzz they create a lot of noise. So when people are talking and they are, you know, they are producing, uh, they're bringing different ideas, it causes confusion in a person. It can. Any human being can get can get affected. So here Allah is saying, Annahu, annahu al min rabbihim. Know that this is the truth from your heart. Like Allah is reaffirming, reassuring the belief, the Prophet ﷺ and the believers of this, this, this is the truth from your Rabb. It's from Allah. No matter what people say, and Allah is not unaware of what they did, uh, what they do. And again, um, uh, just to uh, reiterate, uh, just uh, from the previous uh, lesson that when did this uh, Qibla change happen? Uh, so it happened while Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had moved from Mecca to Medina. And in Mecca, he used to face the, Ka the Kaaba. When he came to Medina, they started face facing the Jerusalem because if a command has not come from Allah, then the Prophet would follow what the previous Prophets used to do. So when he came to Medina previously, because the previous Prophets there are the Jews, Jews are, the they were following the previous Prophets, right? Or somewhat, whatever. So he would follow their way. And their way was they used to turn to uh, Jerusalem. And then Allah again caused them back to turn to, caused everyone and the whole world to turn towards. And from then on, that our Qibla is, uh, is, uh, is the Kaaba. Okay, I number one forty five. One forty five. Well, while in a ma bikulli ayatin ma tabiu qiblatak. And if you brought to those who were given the scripture every sign meaning you brought um different um uh you brought different uh explanations you brought different signs people who don't want to be guided will not be guided no matter how much you try to convince them they will not be guided so here Allah is saying those who if those who were given the scriptures meaning the the Jews and the Christians no matter whatever sign you brought to them they will not follow it because they didn't their their uh, prop their doubts come from a from a place of bad intention their doubts are not coming from you know, real curiosity, their doubts are coming because of bad intention. They want to create division. They have, they have, they have um, illness inside their heart. They have jealousy inside their heart. They have a problem. Why did their leadership get taken, uh, taken away from us? Right? With Allah SWT honor the Bani Israel, with the people of the book, Allah SWT honored them. But the people, he, they, they expected to do, do, do whatever they felt like, and still Allah would keep favoring them. So at one point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really took the charge away from them. 
and gave it to gave it to the the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وَمَا أَنْ تَبِتَابِعِينَ قِبْلَتَهُمْ Nor would they be followers of one another's qibla, meaning they themselves are very divided. Even the enemies of the the enemies of Rasulullah, they themselves are really divided. They're not even reunited themselves. They themselves have different Jews face one side of even now Jews face one side of uh, Bayt al Maqdis, and the the Christians face one side of Bayt al Maqdis. Okay, it's I'm not exactly can exactly recall. One faces the western side, one faces the eastern side, and one faces the Jew, the Christians face the side where Maryam alayhi salam used to stay in Bayt al Maqdis and worship, and the Jews face the opposite side because they don't want to follow the Christians. So it's a complete confusion. It's a complete so even the people against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they themselves are not in agreement. They themselves are so confused. Okay. So Allah subhanahu is saying that he's reassuring the believers that. Even, you know, your enemies are themselves divided. So there is nothing to be afraid of. You're on the right path. Even if people say it's just noise. Okay, it's a lesson for us. Whatever happens when we take the right steps in life and people oppose us, it's bound to happen. It happened with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا بَعْدُهُمْ بِالتَّابِعِينَ فِي بَلَا تَبَعَدْ and so if you were to follow their desires after what has come to you of knowledge, indeed, you would also be among the wrongdoers. So after gaining the truth, if you start following them for that time, for this in for Rasulullah Rasul, Rasul and for the Sahabas, this ayah means that if you start changing your qibla after after getting the knowledge, then you will be among the people who do zulm, right? So what it, what it means for us is when we get to know the truth from Allah, when we get to know certain commands, we know we have to do this, and we still continue to do, we still continue to follow our previous way of life, then who are the wrongdoers? Who is to blame? Ourselves and our desires, okay? I number 146. Allah is saying those who were given the book, meaning the meaning the Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, they know they know him, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as they know their own sons. Okay, but in, instead, a party of them conceal the truth, truth while they know. Meaning, these people, they know about the Prophet, they know about the coming of the Prophet, they know about the Qibla, as much as they know their own sons. That means they know it so well, right? This is Allah's one like giving a comparison, okay? But they hide the truth for their own benefit. So they don't, sometimes people uh, do not give complete truth or do not reveal the complete truth just for their own benefit. The scholars of the Jews, they used to they, they used to keep this information, this knowledge to themselves and not reveal it to the, the regular public who was not so learned. So they would not reveal about the prophet because they were scared. What if they start following the prophet? Then our, our power will go. So here, Allah SWT, and this is the kind of zulm they used to do. This is the kind of things that you used to do. Even a lot of ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah previously, we learned that these are some of the things used to change the words, they used to add the words, you to mispronounce the words. So these were common practices practices of the, the ulama of the, of the, of the Ahl al-Kitab. They used to do things like this. Okay? So here, Allah SWT is telling, he's reassuring that just giving different ways to show that you're on the truth. And people who are in falsehood, the kind of things they do. Okay, the people who are in falsehood are people who try to deviate other people. They will hide some things. They will not reveal everything. Uh, even nowadays for, for the for benefit, to fit in, for example, to fit in the Canadian culture, some Muslims, some, you know, sometimes people look up to some people, but especially people with knowledge. This is a natural, normal thing. But people, they behave in a certain way or they dress in a certain way or they do things in a certain way which confuses 
normal public, right? So sometimes when we, we this is why this is very important to gain knowledge ourselves. And our role model is only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? The other people are just human beings. Yes, of course, we should learn from teachers and stuff, but they, in the end of the day, are humans too. But the one who's, who, who, who has the knowledge, they, have, they hold a responsibility because people look up to them. And their behaviors and their decisions and their things that could be misguidance for other people. Because normal people could get confused, right? min rabbik. Allah SWT says that the, the truth is from Allah. And everything el else is battle. Everything else is falsehood. The truth is from Allah. فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَرِينَ Do not ever be among the doubters. Who creates doubts? Shaitan creates doubts. Shaitan, shaitan creates confusions in people think. You know you're doing something right. Or sometimes you know you're doing something. And then he will create, bring doubts, create problems among people, create mistrust between people. So shaitan, so when the, the learned scholars, uh, so and here why Allah SWT is saying, when people who have knowledge, when scholars or people with knowledge behave a certain way, the rest of the people become doubt, in, they become in doubt because they put their trust in that individual, right? Like like someone like, like, like for example, a small, a student and a teacher, a student's usually students look up a teacher or like parents and children, right? So uh, children, look up to their parents okay even from as as a, they copy they imitate even as a child right so when a person who has authority when they have knowledge when that person starts behaving so again knowledge comes with a lot a lot of responsibility right and this is what the the this is what the scholars of the jews used to do that they would behave in a certain way hide information so the mass the, the public would get confused about it okay so a person, Allah SWT is saying that a person should not be engaged in doubts when it comes to the haq. Quran is haq. The commands of it are haq. Okay, what, you know, the things from Quran and Sunnah are haq. Okay, and, when in, and whenever, what was the way of Rasulullah? Even different things nowadays, like when in doubt, when he was in doubt about things, he would leave it. That was his way. So when, for example, coming to food, you're not sure if this is halal, right? So when he, when you are in doubt, you leave it. Especially if you don't have access to more information about that particular thing, you just you you choose the one that you're sure about. Okay. Uh, number one forty-eight. Well, For each person, each person is a prayer direction towards it he, towards which it faces meaning that every person has has their direction every group of people have their direction okay every every individual so as a group people have directions as an individual they have direction and here the direction is not just direction of salah, that's one direction. That's qibla means the direction of salah. But also we we learn that qibla also means your one's direction in life. What is one's direction in life? So here Allah is asking and asking people to question what is your direction in life? Okay, and He tells us He tells the people your direction in life is fastabikul khairat, is to race towards doing good. You have, we have no time left. Our days, our every, every, every moment that we have in this world is very precious. Okay. And should be used in beneficial things, not wasting it. And beneficial is not always, it's not praying, praying all the time. It's not, it's not uh, reading Quran all the time. You whenever we think about um, good deeds, we always think about Quran and prayer and stuff. Anything beneficial, gaining knowledge is beneficial. Okay, uh, spending time, quality time with your family, friends, that's beneficial as long as, and for friends particularly, as long as it's not useless, like you're talking about useless things, but beneficial things are just, you know, discussing something, if, you know, even about the world, that's fine. And just engaging yourself in, in benefiting other people. Now, what comes under, so we didn't elaborate, I wanted to go a little bit uh, into fastabiku khairat fastabiku means to race. So Allah SWT is not saying that um, 
فَيَعْمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ خَيْرَاتِ Do good deeds. He's saying فَاسْتَبِقُوا Like race. Like run. Not just do them. Race towards them. Because what, what, when do you race towards something? When do you race towards things? When you have less time. Right? You want to get to it really fast. So the, the idea behind rest, racing towards good deeds is Allah is telling us the word race means you have less time. They'll be gone. The, if you don't grab the opportunity, you don't take the chance, the chance will leave. You don't wait for the right moment. I'll wait for the right moment to do this. Yes, of course, you have to do your research. If you want to do something good, you have to also think about it. You're going to make a decision. For example, someone, a person makes a decision, I'm going to wear hijab properly full time. Yes, you have to be convinced of it, but you're not going to wait for the time. If you have made up your mind, and of course, it's the command of Allah, you just do it. And then Allah's help comes. Okay, so race towards it. Okay, firstly, good deeds. We have less time. And secondly, you don't know when that opportunity will be taken away. So grab that opportunity. Now, what things come under khairat? Okay, so all the good things that are from, all the deeds, they're from Quran and Sunnah. They're not against the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, uh, some of the some of the khairat that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentions so from the hadith of the Prophet sallam, first he talking about the khairat the good deeds he said hasten to good deeds before there comes tribulations meaning trials and tribulation when a time of fitna comes like pieces of dark night when a man will be a believer in the morning and a kafir by the evening when a time comes such that that holding on to deen becomes so difficult Right, and it can happen. Nowadays, we have the the dangerous devices in our hand. Morning before, we re you know energized with uh, like let's say you go to a class and you're completely, and then by the end of the day, you're on the phone, you're scrolling, you're this and that, you skip your salah, you don't feel like so. Iman becomes very low. And what did Allah subhanahu what did the Prophet say? The one who does not perform salah, for example, is a state of kufr. So this is similar, this is describing the state. You're so hyped up, you're so motivated. And then over the day, over the over the course of the day, that iman goes really low because of different actions that a person's involved in. Okay, so here he's saying that the moment you're in that state, start doing deeds so that you don't get distracted. Okay, uh, so a person will be a believer in the morning and kafir by evening, and he will be a believer in the evening and a kafir by morning. Okay, selling his rel religious commitment for the worldly gains. Okay, so some of the khairat. So what are the what are the actions that a person uh that are khairat that are that are good. In this in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa So number number one is the performance of your obligatory deeds. Like obligatory, like your salah, giving zakat. Okay, these things are obligations. Another attack, so shaitan attacks in different ways. Another attack of shaitan is to engage people in doing voluntary things and take them away from obligatory things like you're doing a voluntary action you're packing up gift packs and this and that for this and you miss your prayer so you're doing and you know he makes you think you're doing so much good stuff and stuff and in that time you've missed the ob ob obligatory actions so the khairat means to fulfill first first and foremost the obligations which includes your prayer once one salah pray, prayer on its on its time Okay, giving of zakah, the things that are obligations in Islam. Then comes khairat are the voluntary actions. Okay, and among the voluntary actions, the most one of the most beloved action to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving giving sadaqah. So a sadaqah that is given. So whenever a person gives sadaqah, sadaqah is a barrier between a person and a person and any any tribulations that comes your way. So giving sadaqah takes away harm from a person. Giving sadaqah increases blessings in a uh, in a person's life, increases their mal. So a person wants more, more mal. Okay, one of the fear when it comes to spending in the way of Allah is that my things will decrease. Okay, and as we all should engage in giving more sadaqah. 
So, and sadaqah also includes donating things that you do not really necessarily need, not hoarding onto things. Because we really, again, have to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the question, what is the center of your life? So when you reevaluate your goals in life, then too many, the things around you do not make that much of sense. So you need to get rid of them. Okay, so get rid of things, give a lot of sadaqah. Sada sadaqah incre increases baraka in life. Sadaqah increases wealth, you know, like materialistic wealth also. The one, the more a person gives, sadaqah also removes uh, hurdles and difficulties. If a person is supposed to face difficulty, the sadaqah will stand in that person. Then also, what if someone does not have, you know, sometimes a person, so some sahabis would be giving some Sahabis would be giving a lot of sadaqah, and some Sahabis who did not have that much money, they would be, they will get, they would get really upset. Like, what about us? The rich ones are giving. What about us? So here, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu narrated, who uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, whoever says la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. A uh, hundred times in a day, it will be as if he freed ten slaves, and one hundred hasanat good deeds will be recorded for him, and one hundred bad deeds will be erased from him, and it will be protection for him against shaitan all that day until evening comes. No one can do anything better than except one except one who does more. Meaning tasbih is sadaqah. So and uh, khairat, one of the one of the good things is when you're just roaming around free, keep doing the tasbihat. Okay. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. La ilaha illallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Because the thing all these keeping your tongue moist, these are also khairat. The khairat also includes, of course, the acts, the, the things related to Quran, learning the Quran, gaining knowledge of the Quran. Okay, so the one who goes in the, so the person who goes, who leaves to, to in the way of knowledge, okay, Allah makes the way of Jannah easy for him. So person who leaves their house or leaves their bed or they comfort to go and learn the Quran, it is as if, because they're striving, right? What is jihad? What is jihad in our times? A jihad means to jihada is to strive. So they're striving and they are in the path of paradise. For some reason, something happens to them. That if that person was to leave that world, at this moment, you leave your house and you're going in the way of, of learning the book of Allah, striving in his way, and a person, then a person will be regarded in, in the sight of Allah as a mujahid, the one who died as a as the one who's striving in the way of Allah, like a person in a battlefield, right? So khairat are Quran, uh, learning the Quran, and supporting others to learn the Quran, teaching them. So what is better than any other, giving people knowledge, but the best knowledge is to give them the knowledge about their own life, the purpose of their life. So teaching Quran, facilitating Quran, places of Quran, okay, facilitating facilitating places that help others to get closer to Allah. So these are all acts of khairat. Okay, and much, many more. So these all, fastabiqul khairat, race towards doing good, good deeds. Wherever you may be, Allah will bring you forth for judgment altogether. Meaning, wherever you are, whether you're doing good or not, whether you run away from Allah, well, you cannot run away from Allah. Where can you run away? Where, where can a person run away from Allah? So wherever a person is, Allah says he will bring them to judgment. So how about that a person is judged while they Allah, when Allah takes them to judgment, they're actually doing good. When they die, they're actually doing good. When the state are not in a state that Allah takes the life and that person is involved in some kind of sin. Because the way a person departs from this world, the same way they will wake up on the day, they will be awakened on the day of judgment. 
Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. Wa min haythu kharajta fawalli wajha ka shadar al-masjid al-haram. So from wherever you go out uh, for prayer, O Rasulullah, turn your face towards masjid al-haram. Wa inna hu lalhaqqu min rabbik. And that is truth from Allah. Wa mallahu bighafinin amma ta'amaloon. Again, wa min haythu kharajta fawalli wajha ka shadar al-masjid al-haram. So wherever you are, turn your face towards Masjid al-Haram. وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطَرًا لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَيْكُمْ حُجَّةٌ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ So uh, turn your faces towards it in order that people will not have any argument against you, except for those who commit wrong. So fear them and not fear me. Okay, this is important. Okay. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Fear me, do not fear people. When you, when you, a person is on the truth, the one who follows the commands of Allah, they are the ones who, when the, they are the ones, when a person understands the purpose of their life, they should remove the fear of people from their heart. And do not, they do not, they don't care what people think. They don't care what people of what people think about them. They don't care what people are talking about them. If their purpose in life is clear, if they are there to please Allah, so here Allah is saying, when you are doing the right thing, then fear me. Don't fear them. Don't fear people. Don't care about what people say. Okay, and here if you and be conscious of Allah. Okay, because again, a person has to return to Allah. This uh, change of Qibla was completing a favor of Allah upon the people. To give honor to the Muslims. To make one direction for everyone in the world. This is Allah's favor, right? There is no confusion. Allah removed the doubts. Allah cleared the doubts. Allah made life so easy and without any doubts, with clarity. Right? When you gain, for example, when a person is confused about a concept, right? You feel so stressed out. You feel like you're lagging in class. The moment it that concept becomes clear, it feels like life became easy, right? You you pass. So this way, I'll hear the main concept is the concept of life, the question of life. Here Allah, he completed his favor. What was his favor? To give clear guidance to people. To make a qibla, a, 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 a clear direction for people. And qibla again, not just the direction that we pray in, but our direction of life. He gave us, he gave us the Quran and he gave us the Rasul to show us the clarity of that direction. And here Allah when the next ayah says, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْكُمْ so he did not just give us the, the direction, the Qibla. He gave us a direction. So we have a physical direction. And then we have the Quran to give us the real direction in our life. The Quran gives us a direction. Just like Kama, just like he gave us, he sent down the Rasul to teach us. So he gave us the Qibla. He gave us the book. He gave us the person who implemented and showed the book, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ Just how he sent the Rasul among you all. What were the responsibility of Rasulullah? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا He would recite the ayat. He would recite the ayat. Then he would teach. وَيُعَلِّمُكُ الْكِتَابِ And he would teach the ayat. So he would recite on people, recite on the hearts of people, and then he would teach, he would give the, he would explain the ayat, right? The ayat are there, and then right now, the tradition that we follow too, the tafsir that we're learning is, it goes back, if you follow back the chain, this all goes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He gave us the explanation, then God it got for, uh, carried forward to the Sahabas, then the followers of the Sahabas, the Tabi'in, then the followers of the followers of the Sahabas, the Tabi Tabi'in, and then the later scholars. Right. So we have a whole, you know, series. But who does it go back to? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He used to sit and teach the Sahabas this way, passionately teaching them the ayat, the explaining the ayat of the Quran. Right. And here, Allah say that He sent a man who would explain. 
just if Allah only gave the book without any explanation, right? Imagine that he could have done that. Allah can, Allah can do every, anything, right? But he, out of his mercy, he sent a Rasul. And the Rasul, so as the people learned the ayat, uh, it purified them, okay? And purified the heart. So the ayat of the Quran should cleanse the heart. What is purification? Removing the evil and bringing in goodness into the heart, okay? Uh, so he taught the explain the book and wisdom wisdom comes through what so here with wisdom meaning the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam so he taught his sunnah his way how to follow things how to do deal with things in different parts of life in different moments of life how to how to implement that ayat right and to teach people what they did not know. So we got the book, and through this book, we get a lot of things. We recite the book, we and we do the recitation of the Quran, we understand the Quran. Quran, as we learn, should clean our heart. And then on the and the next step the Quran should do is bring make us more wise. And while learning the Quran, we should, what is hikmah? Hikmah is to do, to, to know the right from the wrong, to make that, to take the right step at the right time. And how do you know that? Through the Quran and Sunnah. So they both go in her hand in hand. So Allah says, ayah number 152. So after all these blessings, the blessing of the Qibla, the blessing of the Quran, the blessing of um, the, the messenger that he came, the, who came with the Quran, um, who Allah SWT gave the Quran to, I number 152, Allah SWT says, uh, was So, فَذْكُرُونِي So, remember me. Do zikr of me. And, أَذْكُرْكُمْ I will remember you. Meaning, be, remember me, do zikr of me. The one who's connected to Allah, Allah is connected to that person. وَشْكُرْلِي and be grateful to me and do not commit kufr. The opposite of shukr is kufr. Okay, the opposite of shukr is kufr. Kufr means to, to hide, to deny, to deny. So there are multiple meanings of kufr. One of the meanings is to deny. One of the meanings is to hide. So one who does kufr, they hide the blessings of Allah. They don't like to mention, they don't like to accept it. One who does shukr, shukr means to show. So you show the blessings of Allah. You're grateful for these blessings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when Allah is giving the favor of Quran, and when the person leaves the Quran because of what people say, or if, if, or if a person doesn't have time, they have different uh, responsibilities or different other priorities, then that is that comes under ingratitude. What does gratitude here come for us? Given shukr, us, for us, is to learn the Quran and take the responsibility forward. Teach it to other people. This is our way of doing shukr. And what is kufr is when, and what is the opposite of it? What is the kufr also translate also as ingratitude? Is when a person receives the favor, receives the favor of, from Allah, but in return, doesn't have time for it. Like imagine you ask someone for something, or you really wanted something, and they come in, they come at your door and give you, and you be like, sorry, I don't have time to take this. They're already doing a favor for, you know, they traveled all the way to a different city to give you a gift or something, and you really needed this. You know, it was something of your requirement. And you're like, nah, I'm sorry, I'm not available at this time. Can you come at this time? Can you? So, you know, what would the other people perceive that person as? Like, what kind of a person is this? How ungrateful person is this? So when Allah gave uh, Allah gave a great blessing, people don't have time for it. People don't have the 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 you know even a little bit of you know couple of moments in their day to to give it, and they have all the time in the world to do everything, right? The one the person who goes the one who goes behind Allah, Allah gives him. Allah gives himself to him, that person, and the whole dunya. 
But the one who goes behind the dunya, Allah distances himself from that person and also keeps him. The dunya is in front and the person keeps running. And the dunya keeps running and the person is running. He never gets it. But the one who submits himself to Allah, they get Allah, they get the dunya, the dunya as well. And but the most important thing for that person, their priority is Allah. Even if the dunya, the the the, the dunyavi matters become easy for that person. Okay, so zikr first guruni, zikr the Quran, another name. So Quran has many different names. One of the names of Quran is also zikr, remembrance, right? It is, and what is zikr? Zikr is something that you do repeatedly. Quran is not something, Quran itself is, means a book recited often, repeatedly. So zikr is also to do remembrance repeatedly. It's not once, it's not once in a month, it's not once in a week. Okay, it should be at least once in the day, right? That is zikr. Okay, so here Allah SWT also says in Surah Surah Ibrahim, ayah number seven. Okay, la in shakartum la azi la nakum. If you are grateful to me, I will increase you. So gratitude increases the blessings of Allah. And how can we? So we don't have to just say yes, Alhamdulillah. That's one way. But how do you show Alhamdulillah? It's not just lip service. It's not just words from our mouth. It needs to be action. And shukr for us when it comes to the Quran, particularly since we're talking about the book, is to learn the book, to apply it on yourself, and to take this forward. Because we are the Ummat and Wasatan. We're the middle nation, as we previously did in ayah number 142. in uh, This is again Surah Ibrahim, ayah number 7. Uh, and if you're ungrateful, inna azabi la shadid then my so the person who's ungrateful not only allah takes the blessing away allah also brings them a lot of azab okay and just on one uh short point uh, one small reflection that something to reflect on right since we're talking about the bani Israel, the people of the people of the book is that one very important thing if you look at the history of bani Israel, what did they do they were allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took them from the worst man to ever exist. Throne. You could they could not they were slaves. You know, slaves, they, they they're not the servants of the nowadays. Like even you know, in different countries, you have people house help. But they're not, those are not slaves. They were slave. Slavery is on a different level. They could not imagine, they could not even fathom the idea that someone, that Pharaoh will be gone and someone will take away. They were so enslaved. Allah took them out of the slavery. He took them in the desert, right? They were going towards their home place from Egypt to Palestine. They were on their way. Now it's complete desert. Right? They have the prophet of Allah. This is also a blessing. Being with the prophet of Musa is with them. Now they're in the desert. Because they don't have to worry about food, Allah sends food from the, from the heavens, manna and salwa. Even that is taken care of, right? Then when they're going and it's really hot, it's desert. Allah SWT uses clouds to shade them. You know, even cloudy, even today is cloudy. It's been quite hot the last couple of days. And clouds bring, a, a, you know, cloudy, that weather brings, a, you know, a kind of comfort. When it's cloudy, it's pleasant weather. So Allah SWT shaded them with the clouds. Then Allah SWT brought different springs for them. Fresh water, so food, water, shade, everything is taken care of. So many blessings, right? Something that a person would think in Jannah, right? Food is Jannah. They're already getting in this dunya. And after that, look at the behavior of their ulama. Look at them. Then what did Allah SWT say? Uh, if, you, if you are grateful, I will increase you. But if you're ungrateful, if you deny, you do not do what Allah made you to do, Allah will humiliate. And you just, it's not, there are many incidents in the history. We just took out one incident of the Holocaust, of the Jews, right? The mass killing of Jews. Uh, and I was reading upon it, six million Jews were killed in Germany. Six, and Germany and surrounding countries at that time. Six million. And the way they were killed, it is horrendous. It's so scary. It is so scary to look at. Literally, Killing houses were made. 
like you know torture places were made they would take groups of people hundreds of people like you know imagine people make you know specific places to execute people like you know they they build up these they and they're tortured people are tortured this is a hum this is humiliation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right this is azab of allah so allah says that if you are ungrateful then allah does not take away only the blessings for that person in azabi la shadid okay this is again so this is something to we really need to think about you know how does the person show gratitude to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do we it's simple the message is simple right allah says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rasulullah said allah says so this is hadith al qudsi this is hadith of the prophet, uh, prophet meaning the words of allah i am as my servant expects of me whatever a person a, a person thinks of allah allah is like that with him Okay, I am with him as he remembers me. If he remembers me in himself, meaning within himself, I will remember him in myself. Okay, if he mentions me in a gathering, I will mention him in a greater gathering. What is the greater gathering? The gathering of the angels, right? When he draws near me by the span of his hand, I draw near him by the length of the arm. If he draws near me by the length of the cubit, I draw near him by the length of the beaning. If he draws near to me by an inch, I draw he near to him by a foot. Like if a person makes this much little bit effort, Allah puts this much effort. Meaning this is just to exam. When he comes to me walking, I come to him running. Okay, so first Guruni, remember Allah. Do zikr, zikr of Allah, zikr is Quran. Zikr is also the azkar that we do. But also the Quran is a zikr of Allah. Okay. How do we, simple lesson from today's uh, class is that how do we do shukr, right? We, we sometimes think Allah has given me so many blessings. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Firstly, do good. khairat. Think of all the opportunities that a person does, gets to do good. And secondly, do shukr through learning this book. Our purpose in life is to learn this book and to take the message of this book, the deen, forward to each and every person around us. Whether it's our kids, our neighbors, our friends, our extended family, okay? And so many of us, they have so many members within our even extended family, sometimes even in our own nuclear family that need so our duty is to, and you cannot teach someone when you don't follow something. You can practice, you can preach and not practice it yourself. You can't tell someone to do something you don't do yourself. So first you have to, we have to work on ourselves. And then when, as you're working, not wait and no, I'm going to wait for 10, 20 years to work on myself. No, as you're working on yourself, you also do it on others as well. It's a hand, it's a process that goes hand in hand. All right, inshallah. So we'll stop here for today's ayat. Okay. Any reflections that anyone would like to share? Serena, right now. However, we like to read this book, that's how we will be raised in the way Jamie is. Which is why if we don't know when we're passing it, we mm -hmm. want to always make sure that we're actually in Kuwait. Yes, we have to. That's. That's an important thing. So at least not be in a state of evil. A state of goodness is, it's difficult, right? But at least have to make sure not to, like every time you're doing something not so right, think, okay, what if my soul is taken at this time? I got to stop it. At least you're not doing evil. At least you're not engaged in something wrong. Yes. Uh, we should race towards doing good. Uh, we should, should we, because we have less time. We shouldn't just wait for the time to come. We should do it right now. Yes. So don't wait for some time, uh, you know, whether it's grade, now you guys are grade seven, right? But it's grade seven. It's, you never know, it's, as long as a person has reached a state of maturity, when they know what is right and wrong, that means that's when their um, uh, book of deeds is open, right? Then they are being judged. And then when the life gets taken away, which can be in any moment for any one of us, then we'll be accountable for our deeds. Okay, so that means you have to be, and your Quran is zikr. 
Allah SWT knows the nature of human beings. Insan nasiya means to forget. Human beings forget. That's why they need dhikr. Con continuous remembrance until, until from cradle to grave. Okay. Okay. Um. Anyone else would like to share? Yes. Yes. Then Allah brings the dunya to defeat of that makes the matters of the dunya easy. Like you know, for example, someone's working, the job becomes easy. Normally, if, if a person is only doing the job and nothing else, no no remembrance of Allah, nothing. They're just living a life, get up, nine to five. It's so difficult. The, the, the boss is difficult. The, the colleagues are difficult. Children are difficult. And expenses are difficult. And inflation is difficult. But when a person makes the goal Allah, everything else around, they're still doing it. They're still doing it. It doesn't mean that when you make Allah the goal, that you leave everything in your life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assists Makes things easy. You know, and you're just wondering, oh my God, I had no food. How did this someone, and you know, suddenly neighbor comes and drops the food. Prime um example. Like you don't have iftar, you're so exhausted. And then someone sends the amazing like tray of iftar with like amazing things. Oh, yeah. yeah. It it makes, it feels so good. Like, you know, you really feel it. Just small examples in our everyday life, right? So this way, Isra, would you like to share? You can type up two. All right, inshallah, we will end here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Inshallah, see you guys next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.